year ago, the National Ombudsman of the Dutch Kingdom, that is the National Ombudsman of the Netherlands, Curaçao and St. Martin, gathered on Aruba to lend support to the Parliament in its quest to pass legislation to establish an Ombudsman institution for Aruba. With the National Ombudsman of the Netherlands also being the Ombudsman for the Best Islands, the need for us as Ombudsman of the Dutch Kingdom to meet on a yearly basis, to exchange best practices, discuss common issues and lend support where desired, was recognized and established. Um, in fact, I'm not so sure if when we discussed it last year about lending support, my colleagues envisioned that it was hard work, like we did <laughs> the past two days. <laughs> to make it all happen, budget neutral, we called upon the Department of Internal Affairs of the Netherlands, based at CAM, which earlier had expressed commitment to support good governance in the overseas territories. This, of course, this initiative, of course, was a great opportunity for them to act. We immediately, as ombudsman, called upon BZK for support. I thank BZK for their contribution towards empowering the ombudsman work on the islands by taking care of travel and accommodation expenses of the ombudsman and support staff, as well as a representative from Aruba who joined us for the three days. Also sponsoring part of this session, which I look forward to be a very interactive session considering the many questions I often receive from persons present and not present in the audience this afternoon. As the first Ombudsman of St. Martin, I consider myself to be an important ally of the executive branch, government administration, as well as private entities with public authority in promoting good governance. It therefore gives me great pleasure to have several representatives of public entities with public authorities, said me O's, present at this session. It is the intention that we start contacting the, SB, the ZBOs soon to closer discuss the role of the Ombudsman pursuant to the LAR, which gives the Ombudsman the mandate to also investigate propriety in that sector, the ZBOs. The first formal annual gathering of Ombudsman of the Dutch Kingdom is scheduled to be closed tomorrow after an evaluation meeting of the events of these two days. I thank the Office of the Prime Minister for providing security, transport and protocol to receive our guests. I thank the USM for their service in accommodating the workshops for the civil servants, Great Bay Resort, and you, the audience, for coming out. We look forward to interact with you this afternoon, get your feedback and suggestion to enable us to better serve the community of St. Martin and Parliament to whom I report. Thank you. The most important thing, I think, for all of us as we're sitting here, serving society, be it as a minister, be it as a member of parliament, ombudsman, judge, uh, a high official, um, what we are doing is trying to make things better on this island, trying to make things better in my country where I work, and trying to make things better in the Kingdom of the Netherlands. And for that reason, I think it's 
something's happening now. Um, but this can be said out very loud. Um, I, as Dr. Adan already mentioned, am as grateful as she is that the Ombudsman of the Kingdom have the opportunity and the possibility to gather at least once a year to do this important work. What we find out in the last two days and what we were finding out when we met in Aruba last year is that there is so much in common. Because serving for the citizen is a big, big thing to do and in what part of the world you are acting actually is not that important because the things we come across and the things we can do are rather similar. Be it that context from time to time differs. And we, the, the four of us, the four ombuds institutions, one is almost there and the three others are already established, is that we take as a point of starting, a point de départ, that public administration is there for citizens and not the other way around. And if we take that all as our starting point, I am sure that we will help all those people out that are in some way getting into trouble with administration or politics or have some, some serious problems concerning social benefits, housing, debts, and all those other things you wish people not to come across with. So we have, I think, and I hope, as, a, as this point of starting for the discussion we will have in, let's say, half, a, half an hour, three quarters of an hour, that we want to deliver. We want to take our role. We want to be serious in fulfilling our tasks. And we want, I say it again, we want to serve this society and the citizens that live in it. And for that we have chosen within the kingdom, but St. Martin in itself also, as did Curaçao, as did Aruba, as did the Netherlands. We chose the democratic society and we, we, we chose actually the rule of law as, as the basic principle for the way, let's say, our society has to function. There's actually three pillars in my view, which is the rule of law, there is the constitution or the Staatsregeling, and there is, of course, human rights. And the kingdom, as we all know, is part of the European Convention on Human Rights, which is also a binding factor for the Ombudsman here present, because when it comes to propriety, I think human rights are very much and very important. And I would like to say something about that rule of law, and I hope that you have some sort of concept on what it is. And, and, and I think there's, 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 there's one element in it that is for us today is very, very important, and that is um, that we are bound by the law, private and public, citizens, authorities, governments, governmental bodies, everybody who takes part in this society. And Lord Bingham, he was a, a law lord in the, the United Kingdom, said it this way, the, the rule of law that is that all persons within the state, whether private or public, should be bound by and entitled to the benefit of laws publicly made, taking effect generally in the future and publicly administered. And I think if we take that formulation or definition of the rule of law, we for sure know what we have to do then. We are representing government. An ombudsman is also part of the structure and part of the government being a high council of state. Parliament is part of the democratic society. Um, the government takes its own role. But we all are, and that is very important, and I can't say enough, and I will repeat it several times this afternoon, we are all bound by the law. We are not above the law. We are bound by the law. We have to stand for the rights of the citizens, and by that we have to be, well, obliging to the laws ourselves. And it sounds very easily said, but it's very difficult to perform. So the rule of law, the constitution, and human rights. And I expect that human rights is something that is here also in this society, um, uh, common knowledge and commonly applied. And for in that, 
I can refer, for example, to the case um, brought by the, the Ombudsman of St. Martin before the Constitutional Court of St. Martin, in which it was at stake whether lifetime imprisonment and sentence was appropriate and in, well, in, in accordance with um, human rights as um, explained by the court in Strasbourg. And we found out, I think you even hear in St. Martin sooner than we in The Hague, um, that there is some restrictions by this convention and human rights that has effect on the way we formulate our laws. And it had a big impact, and the impact of the, of the, uh, the Constitutional Court of St. Martin is also feasible now in the Netherlands, where our Minister of Justice now is writing a sort of letter of understanding or, or draft, draft law to Parliament so that we in the Netherlands are also in accordance with human rights. So human rights is also a binding principle on all the islands. And then there's this constitution. And the constitution is for ombudsmen and for high council of state very important. Why? Because our position is enshrined in that constitution. In the beginning, 1982 in the Netherlands, it was just the law on the national ombudsman. And afterwards, some years later, it was part of the constitution. So it is now in the constitution and it is in US Staatsregeling that the position of the Ombudsman is that of a High Council of State, which makes him fully independent of government, that is, of the executive, and he is, he is impartial. And she is impartial too, I'm sure. Uh, and that means that we have a position within society of advising government bodies, of for Ombudsman handling complaints, but for example, for the Court of Auditors, is, it goes the same, they are impartial, independent, good advisors, and they have to do what they must do within the framework I just gave you. Within this democratic state, with its three pillars, human rights, rule of law, and staatsregeling or constitution. And for me, personally, that is a, a sort of extra you get when you take up this office because the people await from you that you fulfill that role, that you show what independence is, that your, your complaints handling is impartial, uh, that you say what is the truth, and that your analysis and your investigations are thoroughly, which is a heavy duty, I can tell you. It is not easy to do that. It is not easy to do that, why not? Because from time to time you have to displease government. You have to displease government. I think uh, uh, the, 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 the president of the uh, Hoge Raad in the Netherlands, Mr. Korsens, at his uh, farewell speech said something like, Some, from time to time it must, and he named the word, word, schuren between the powers of states. And I think it is one of the most important roles of an ombudsman that he makes it schuur. What's the, what's the proper word for schuur in English? Friction. Friction. Yeah, okay. You know what I mean? I, I just look in the room. You know what I mean? We, we, we should have from time to time somebody say, I don't like this ombudsman. I don't like them. I just don't like them. And I know in, the, in Holland it is like that from time to time. And then they say, oh, but yeah, but you know, now I look at his investigation and I see his recommendations, I start liking him again. And the next week is the other way. And what we do is take a position and get steady. Because we have this very important part of the point of starting. We are there for the citizens. And we take the citizens' perspective always first on our list. We want and is the way we formulated in, in the vision and in the mission of the, the Netherlands Ombudsman that, that is now, uh, um, I think, one year old. It was sort of revised when I started. And we think that when government acts, whatever capacity, be it the, 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 the national government, be it the local authority, be it a, 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 a civil servant, be it a secretary general, be it making policies or making laws, in everything that government does, it must take into account the position of the citizens. What will it do to the ones living in my country? What will be the effect? Will there be harm? Will there be positive developments? Will there be some problems? And can I already see what problems that will be? 
and find some solutions by my own motion. That is the role you have, you have as being part of parliament, government, executive. And it is our role as a high council of state to emphasize that governments do their work well if they take into account the particular perspective of the citizen. And this is not something that is sort of high blown knowledge and almost scientific. We found out these two days, yesterday and today, that civil servants in this country very well know what it means, the perspective of the citizens. And we were discussing how we can do better. And we were discussing what type of problem we come across. And I think it is very, very hopeful and promising to see that the bottlenecks we identified these days, that these are bottlenecks that can be over one, that these are bottlenecks that will be flat bottles without necks, just straight bottles, you know, to put your flowers in and show that you have over one and overcome. So the citizen's perspective is the point we take always first on our list. And then it comes to another task we have as Council of State, High Council of State. It goes for the Court of Auditors, it goes for the, for the Raad van Advies, and it goes for the Ombudsman. We want to contribute to what is called good governance. And good governance might imply there is not go good governance at this moment, so we now have some writers and some, sci some, some scientists that say, well, we better talk about we are going for better governance, to show that some things are already going well, but that we can do better. And I think if you read the report of the Ombudsman of St. Martin and if you read the reports of the Ombudsman of Curacao and my own reports, you will find out what we meant by making things better, which is no longer Philips, but it is now just the Ombudsman. Because if you read these reports, you can see where things went wrong between government and a citizen. And the work of the Ombudsman is not to accuse. The work of the Ombudsman is not to judge. I did that years before, but I, I quit judging. I started recommending, which is a totally different position, but as important as, as judgments. And, and, and I think that our recommendations are always pointing out that there where trust between the citizen and the government is lacking, we show where you can do better. You can do better by giving better information. You can do better by a uh, sort of early warning system, being there at the very moment a problem exists. Um, uh, you, you, you could uh, um, restore that bond of trust uh, by writing out where things went wrong and what can be done better in the future. And you can show what harm it does is government is not taking into account the position of the citizen um, when uh, governmental acts are taken. And we were discussing this morning very, let's say, basic things, and also some very difficult problems, but the basic things were being responsive. Where is the responsiveness of government? That is one of the, one of the first things governments should do. Civil servants, individuals should do. You as parliamentaries should do. Giving information, adequate information, and in time. We found out, and this is not new, not to you and not to me and not to this country and not to other countries. But we found out once more this morning that if somebody is complaining, he from time to time not even receives a letter in which is confirmed that his complaint is received. We found out this morning that from time to time when a complaint was made that there was no reaction at all. And we found out from time to time also in this country even when there was a second letter, and a third letter, and a fourth letter, that there was no reaction at all. And I came across these problems also in my capacity of the Ombudsman of Bonaire, Stacia, and Saba. And I come it across almost every day in my capacity of Ombudsman in the Netherlands. And we will have work forever, because I'm sure governments will make mistakes, and they will go on and try better. But the basics the responsiveness, the openness of government, government not as a sort of great big body, nobody knows exactly what it is, but government in the form of those civil servants at the windows, as we were talking about this morning. They want to do their best. They want to do well. And they want to be in the position, 
And we, Ombudsman, you, uh, uh, members of Parliament, you, members of the government, ministers, you are in the position to accommodate your own civil servants so that they can fulfill the task they feel is part of their job. And that's what I ask from you, actually. Now, I could stop after this and just say, well, let's go back and not work. We all take our own responsibility and we start working on that and we make all the civil servants, um, uh, we give them the position, we make them independent, we give them the room and the space to do so because they know what's best. We found that out this morning. And remember, for the citizen, there is not just one government. There is many departments, there is many ministers, uh, there is there's many, very, but, but in the end, there is for them actually only one government. It is them, he or she, and the government. And how the government is organized in all these different different forms from time to time, even not very transparent to find out where to be, on, 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 on what door to knock. We have to take into account the perspective of the citizen that he is confronted with this overhead, the government in all its entities, and he sees that as one. And we, as part of the, of the government, you, we have to know that when we're going to reply. We must know that there is many governments, but only one citizen. And that the problem can come from various different ways to this one citizen, and that he is confronted with different information, um, contradictory from time to time, um, not adequate, um, etc., etc. So if you are starting to handling complaints or to intervene to make things better, you always have to realize that in most of the cases it is not just you and your department or ministry, but there is many others involved too. And Dr. Ardain was mentioning the ZBOs, and it is from my own experience in the Netherlands that ZBOs, uh, um, it, it is not all only f when, when there's, there's a complaint about them, this mostly also is com a complaint about some ministry because there is a strong relationship between the ministries and these ZBOs. So also there we have to take into account that for the citizen it is difficult to get through this, this, this route and where he cannot find his way and we have to help him out. And this morning in the workshops, uh, some of the cases that we were, we were discussing was exactly about this problem. And uh, it's, we, we call it in, the, in Dutch van het kastje naar de muur. And I have found out this morning that in English it is from pillar to post. Uh, and from pillar to post is the complaint we receive most. We send people away who have serious complaints, instead of helping them out, showing them the way where they can have redress or information or adequate uh, treatment. That is the feedback I would like to give you from, from, from our workshops. Um, and then something more about taking High Council serious. Um, if, if I am asking you, are you taking High Council serious? I'm sure you will say yes. And if I leave the door and you have to answer that question, you will still say yes. But the question is, do you take High Council serious? Do you take my recommendations serious? Do you take into account the reports of your Court of Auditors? Do you take serious the, the Raad van Advies? We are there just not for nothing. And we are not there because we enjoy the job. We are there because we want to effective, and we want to, to cause effect. We want to be effectively involved in the development of government and in the service of the government. And in the, this morning, some of the, of, the, of the colleagues said in the workshop, um, being asked, what's your aim after today? And she said, I will raise the bar. And I said, well, that's good. I remember that one. Because I think that in a few words says what the High Council of States um, really want to do. Raise the bar and show how you can enter although that bar is raised. That is what we want. And the effectiveness of, of our recommendations, and I know in all the countries, the three countries with all institutions, we work in the same way. We have to be very precise in our investigations. We have to be very precise in our analysis. 
and we have to be very precise in our recommendations. Otherwise, you will not follow them. And we have to make you follow our recommendations. And these recommendations, if you read them carefully, are never inspired by a political view in the common sense of the word. Yes, there is politics. We want to go somewhere with the society. We want to make things, things work for our, for our citizens. But there is no way, and no, no, not that I know and am aware of, a sort of political content in our, in our recommendations. We think that what we recommend is valid under this government and will be valid under the next. Because what we are doing, let's say, by example, it would be strange if we would recommend that uh, a proper response should be there within two weeks. And after elections, we would say, no, make it four. That's a strange thing to do. It is between the administration, the public administration, and a citizen, regardless upon who is in charge, who is the prime minister, whether it is my party or not. And that is something we, I think, we, the, all, all of us found out this morning, and we knew it already, but it was very nice to say it out loud, and not just by one voice, and not just an ombuds voice, but the voice of the people in the room, in the classroom. It was a classroom of the university. And we said, that's the way we want to do it. We want to be a proper public administration. We want to serve the public. And serving the public is not related to majority voting, uh, political preferences, or else. It is about the relation between those serving society and the capacity of civil servants and those who are depending upon our service. And if I, if I might say, might make some remark on on where I think, I called it this morning, things are unfinished. That is in the relationship between um, the position of, say, secretaries general, ministers, head of services, uh, in relation to complaint handling. Who is responsible for what? And can you be overruled? If I am head of service or a secretary general and I take the complaints handling in my own hands, and I do it in an appropriate way, and I say, within my department, where I am the chief officer, I think this is an uh, appropriate way of handling the case, and this is the outcome, and I'm going to apologize. Then, do you think, or are you of the opinion, that such a decision taken by a secretary general can be overruled by a minister? I'm not answering the question. I'm just posing the question. I think there we have unfinished work. We have to talk, you have to talk together. How are we going to make policies so that within the public administration there is this policy transparent for the citizens, very transparent, they know where to go, they know what to expect and they know who is responsible for the outcome of the complaints handling.